the premise of a content management system is about content management, right? I mean, it's not rocket science. Managing content is pretty much like managing your desktop. You have files and you want to organize them. You want to make sure that you put things where they should be, knowing where to look for things. And in general, you know, regulating how your content works and influencing how it works. If your platform isn't tailored for doing these things, you may not actually have a content management system. It might be something else. It might be a blogging platform or something else, but it may not be a content management system. Again, this is not rocket science. So let's focus on Plone. Plone is a complete <laughs> content management system. If you're serious about content management, then you should consider Plone. And I resist the temptation to talk about lots of other things about Plone. So, you know, I could tell you about the active, enthusiastic community, the many books, the fact that it's built on Python, the events and conferences, clone cookies, open source, because it's open source, and the fact that it powers sites like the FBI, CIA, NASA, Brazilian government, and some United Nations projects. But I'm going to skip all of that, because we want to focus on the fact that it's a complete content management system, right? Clone is intentionally built. It's actually crafted, designed, and engineered to be a content management system. In other words, unlike other offerings, it started out as a content management system, right, from day one. Originally, it ran on top of this thing called the Zope Content Management Framework. And so I guess Plone is the most well-known distribution of the Zope Content Management Framework. Over the years, it has been refined to make it more and more useful to various audiences. But I'd like to start with a very important matter. Let's talk about security. Plone is secure by design. When I got hacked, I was using a different platform. It was a PHP-based platform, and I thought, you know, I need to start shopping around, because it's not a nice feeling when you're hacked. It's, a, it's as bad as when someone holds you. It's not a nice feeling, <laughs> right? But let's see how these systems stack up. Last three months, according to the vulnerability database out of the states, last three months for Plone, zero vulnerabilities. All right, this is Plone ever, 21, ever, in terms of vulnerabilities. For Drupal, last three months, <laughs> 39 vulnerabilities. But don't take my word for it. You can go there, you can search. I know this is unfair, so um, Ron will have a chance to defend himself. This is not tight. These are known holes and bugs and stuff like that. Here's a big picture of the last three months in terms of vulnerabilities for all systems. So Drupal 39, WordPress 27, Joomla 6, Clone 0, last three months. Clone is secure by design. Out of the box, Clone is fast. So we're talking about speed now. Clone versus the other content management systems out of the box. This is good. Bigger is faster is better. This is Plone, this is WordPress, <laughs> Drupal, Joomla 3.6, although, no, sorry, Joomla 1.5, they are 2.5, so we need, they need to update some of them. There was actually a response from the WordPress community about the Plone speed claims. And he, you know, I was like, well, performance enhancement that make your site better without having to add anything, that's probably a good thing, you know? And Plone does not use MySQL. That's actually wonderful. Something is to say, I'm sure WordPress performance can stand its ground against Plone. Well, I guess we'll have to do the test and we'll see how that goes. But you can test all of these things. I, in fact, did a test on a Plone site that I set up at Pingdom. They have an online testing thing and they keep a database of the performance of different sites that you test. This was not a fancy setup site or anything, just a little sandbox, faster than 84% of sites on the internet that have been tested using this tool. So that to me is important. So Plone has been engineered to be, this is a deliberate effort to improve to the point where it's now faster than all of the major PHP CMSs on the market. What makes it so fast? It's not a big secret. Yeah. <laughs> right? All right, no, seriously, no, seriously. All right. 
<laughs> I, I'm not qualified to go into depth. I can't, I can't go into depth about what makes it fast. Uh, but I can give you a couple of things. It's, it has this thing called built-in resource caching. It has a resource registry. And what it does is if you have multiple JavaScript files, it compiles them into a single working JavaScript or a couple of single ones and minifies them. And if you look at our clone side, you see a lot of cache keys for things that have been compiled for you. So you get these tiny, a, a much tinier footprint because of that, the minifying. And it also does cache busting. So when you're in debug mode, you're going to end up with a situation where you don't have to keep pressing shift refresh to check if things change and stuff like that. Another thing is the ZODB. And Clone has been doing NoSQL long before all these other guys have been doing it. Because the ZODB is an object-oriented database that has been around for easily a decade or more. But for fear of saying anything else that might be silly or inaccurate, I'm going to move on. So how do you get started with Clone? Well, you visit the website, clone.org, you download the point-and-click install. It looks just like a Windows program if you're on Windows. And you click Next, and then you click Install. That's it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, on Windows, you have to run like two other little commands, and then it installs itself as a service in your services panel, so you can stop and start it. That's basically how you install Clone. The installer allows you to install multiple clone sites. You just press Create New Clone Site, and you have a new clone site. That's pretty nice. And this is what a clone site looks like out of the box. Totally unthemed, totally naked, stripped down, but you can theme it out like crazy. Out of the box, you have different content types. So as opposed to this concept of pages and posts, you have events, so you can list an event. You have images, news items, pages. Of course, you can add additional content types. And hopefully, we'll, we'll try and do that in my presentation. You have to design engineer to be a content management system. And it's first crafted for content managers to make the day-to-day the -day life of a content manager easier. Those who support content managers, such as designers and integrators, it's built for them as well. But primarily for content managers. We need to cover five topics. So I've covered three so far. How does Plone support the role of a content manager? Day-to-day ah, -day content management. Yeah. This is a completely contrived example, right? But hopefully it resonates with some of the content managers in the audience. The boss wants you to showcase a report on the front page, right? Overall, we can do the following. Set up a news item, add a little carousel on the front page, and then set up some sliding banner images. Uh, let me show you how that might work. So this is our carousel, and the carousel has certain criteria. I'm just going to hop over to I want to hop over to the admin interface and I'm going to I'm going to add a new news item and give it a title. Cool stuff. Give it a summary and something like lots of alarm if some and let's find a picture. Oh boy, where am I going to find a picture now? Probably pictures. Uh, <laughs> this is kind. Of, this is kind of like using Plone, you know. Windows is kind of like using Plone because you just browse through these folders and stuff. That's pretty nice. Okay, so there we go. It has made a thumbnail for you instantly. Uh, in other words, this is a tiny picture. This is not a squashed version of the big picture that I just uploaded. And you know I just took that from pictures folder, right? It's private, then I publish it. And because of how I set up my carousel on the front page, there you go. Well, that's one job done. In terms of SEO, and any one of these things, you can edit the metadata. So you can set categorization, you can say what things it's related to. So maybe this is related to some other document that I have. I'll just say that it's related. And I'll add a tag, desert. Right? 
and click save. Okay, great. <coughs> so that, that's a little bit about SEO, a little bit about content management, day-to-day -day content management. Right, so let's, let's move back to our presentation. So let's get this out of the way. So that's a little bit about day-to-day -day content management. And we looked at that. So what about for designers? Uh, how many designers in the place, by the way? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Excellent, right. excellent, excellent. These are a couple of clone sites that I like. This is, this is really well done, but it's the back end that really makes this really powerful. But you need to have a nice front end too, right? Right? This back end is crazy, the stuff that they're doing in the back end here. Right? But it's nice to look at pretty stuff too. This is the Jamaica Bankers Association. It is a loan site. And this is the Caribbean Environmental Program, which is also a loan site. A word from our sponsors. Designers. Right. Have you scared your designer recently? You know what I'm talking about. You try to help them to learn how to theme your content management system. Yeah. Or worse. You gave them that handy cheat sheet. The designers give you their beautiful crafted layouts and you, you massacre their pixels. You might as well eat their firstborn. You love your designer. Don't eat their children. <laughs> eh? So I'd like to introduce you to Diazo for theming. And Diazo is made for designers. It's powerful and simple theming. Runs on Plone. It allows you to do things like this. You have your theme over here and you have your content over here. What if you could just magically make your content jump into your theme? I'm here to say, yes, you can. <laughs> With the album. In other words, we want to leave theming for the people that care about pixels. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You want one more minute? You want one more minute? Um, so for integrators, we can create custom content types, but let's, let's just talk about the theme thing, all right? So it turns out that while the other presentation was going on, I really liked that Jamaica 50 site. <laughs> Yeah, man. We need to work together. The design, trust me, trust me. So what I did was I decided I want to put my phone content in it. So <laughs> Jamaica 50 dot theme. A phone theme is one file, right? Let's try it out and see. Let's refresh and see if it's themed. So this is the same site. Remember, we had done some stuff, right? What? Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to say our content in the Jamaica 50 site. Uh, wait, 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 wait. The navigation bar is now my flown content, right? So the news and stuff is now my news. There you go. And I can go to a news item and stuff. <laughs> oh, I have a Mona School of Business theme too. You want to see it? Yeah, let me let me show you that one. Um, <laughs> so Mona School of Business. Which one should I use? I use this one. Now, obviously, this is not the standard way of building a theme, you know. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't do this, right? <laughs> what's, what's the my spot address for? for my spot that Mona. That UA. That edu. That jm. MSB. MSB. So that should be good enough to get us the MSB theme. 
I, I didn't have enough time to clean up like the search box and stuff, you know. Maybe if I had another ten minutes. <laughs> but um this is the Mona School of Business theme in with plum content in it. Right? The same news item. I just refreshed it. Navigation bar is now on the left. Because the navigation was on the left, so I changed that, right? So, yeah, question. <laughs> <laughs>